When athletes change teams or retire, they're often quick to thank the organization and the fans. But when you consider how passionate some of their followers are, a thank you from afar may not be enough. As Chris Hagen reports, one former Saint went the extra mile to truly give back to his most devoted supporters. And setting up a screen to the near sideline of Pierre Thomas. His first touch of the day will result in another big gain for the Saints. They're the people that make the Superdome a truly one-of-a-kind experience. Saints fans. A unique group of costumes, colorful personalities, and most importantly, passion. That emotion feeds the players what they need to play at a high level. For guys like Pierre Thomas, a true underdog, it meant everything. And Thomas won't go down easily. Without these fans, I wouldn't be Pierre Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. So when Thomas realized that his playing days were over, he wanted to find a way to give back to everyone that reached out to him, starting by personally responding to boxes of fan mail. I shipped off maybe about 300 so, and I had more, a lot more to go. A big undertaking in itself, but he still wasn't satisfied after leaving the game in 2015. As I'm reading those letters, they're telling me about who they are, and I'm kind of intrigued, and I wanted to show them that I am a person as well. So he hit the road, a trip that would see him crisscross the United States, from Smithfield, Rhode Island to Tyler, Texas, and many stops in between. Thomas now went running back to the fans, literally. Mr. Thomas, thank you for taking the time to read my letter. I know that you're very busy, but it truly means the world to me that some players take the time out for their fans. Are you Ms. Mayfield? Yes. Pierre Thomas from New Orleans Saints. Meet Jennifer and Abigail Mayfield of Fishers, Indiana. No, Thomas yeah. did on his first stop in 2017. Do you need a minute? Need a minute? Yeah. Okay, no problem. I'll wait a minute. Speechless. And I can see her crack, look inside the house and she's looking at Abigail. I mean, I couldn't see on the other side, but I seen her turn and I knew she was looking at somebody. And then she put her hand over her mouth and she's, I see, see a smile. So seeing something like that, that just brought joy to my heart. To so I can surprise him. Yes, with the kick, oh my goodness. When oh, it, oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Mayfield wrote Thomas when her daughter Abigail was sick in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> when yes. you said it, because I think mean, nobody was expecting it. Thomas' second trip to Minnesota to meet Rick Rodline. He was a fan, he was a collector. He had so many collections. But instead of surprising his fan, his wife told me that, you know, he passed away not too long ago and that that hurt it hurt me i don't know rick that well the only reason why i hurt because i was too late he wrote me and i was too late to even say thank you to him in person thomas quickly realized this visit wasn't supposed to be for rick but for his widow it was amazing seeing her and talking to her um she shed a tear, almost made me shed a tear. I was trying not, I was trying to hold my composure for her, trying to be strong for her, but I was just happy that she allowed us to come in and talk and just speak of Rick, you know, in a positive way and to help lift her spirits as well about him and to see that he touched somebody in this world with his letters. How you doing? I am so moved that you are here in Rhode Island. The long road took him back east to meet Lori Wright who is as passionate about the Saints as she is about rescuing animals from the streets. She almost made me cry as well. And it was another unbelievable feeling just to get this. Oh my God. So you knew I had to, it? you know, you could put it on. Just to see the joy in her face to say like, thank you so much for seeing me. Oh my Lord. That really showed me like what I'm doing here is the right thing. Is this whole row or this this whole box? This here. whole box? Yeah. And it became even oh, more great. apparent in Hellertown, <laughs> Pennsylvania, where Thomas popped in on Cody Wargo. I would say on this trip, Cody was probably the, the super fan out of the people that I've met. I even have your game-worn Illinois jersey from when you were in college. Seriously? Wargo's also the one that Thomas said played a big role in getting the trip started with his letter. Hi, Mr. Thomas. My name is Cody. As fate would have it, they'd actually spoken on the phone after Cody won a contest for being a super collector of more than 50 different Pierre Thomas trading cards. Oh man, this is awesome. The one negative was that 
just hours before I spoke with you, I found out my parents were getting a divorce. So that was a dark spot of the day. I always considered it to be the best and worst day of my life. This is really awesome that you do this for the fans. Oh, it's no problem. I mean, it's, it's awesome, you know, just to receive letters like that. You know? A person like him to tell me that, you know, I helped kind of give him courage and helped him fight through adversity, you know, during a tough time. When he's seen how I, my career was going, fighting through adversity, it helped lift his spirits. And I've seen this, I'm just, I'm just laughing. Thomas then took his tour to Texas, where he knew he had to find Candace Dunn to clear up a mix-up. My agent sent then, you know, FedEx envelope for the Nike uh, contract, and also Candace sent in a FedEx envelope. Both had return envelopes, her FedEx package, which was a jersey, I believe, for her daughter. And um, it was because it was a smaller size. I remember signing the jersey. The only issue was I accidentally swapped the return envelope. And I, I don't know what happened to the jersey, but. So Candace never know. got that jersey for her daughter. <laughs> to make it up, Thomas took the jersey he wore on this special night framed it, and delivered it himself. That's something that maybe her and her family would never forget. I thought you looked familiar. Well, but Thomas will never forget his next stop, Florence, Mississippi. <laughs> do, you, do you remember right? Okay. Yes, I sure do. Where he had an emotional connection with John Bonner and his family. This is me. I sit at home. I don't, I'm scared to leave the house. We were on our way out. His mother said, you don't understand how much this means to him. You showing up like this means so much because he hasn't left his room in three days. And all I remember is that the uh, tail of that plane going down and you just see tracer fire going everywhere. He suffers from PTSD. Meeting John, it was, it was thrilling. I mean, to hear his story of his tours, the things that he went through, having a, he was in a vehicle and his the vehicle that he was in ran over a mine and blew up. Now, I can't, I can't even imagine something like that. And I'm just glad that I can do my part to say thank you for your services and thank you for being a fan. Thomas's tour included several more stops and ended right here in Louisiana, where he made lifelong fans during his eight years in the black and gold. It's, it's not every day that, you know, one of the best backs in, that you grew up watching shows up at your house. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That's why I really wanted to give back because just writing back is not enough. I had time. I was retired. It wasn't enough just writing. I really wanted to go see these people and thank them personally. Chris Hagen, Fox 8 Local First. Thomas added that he hopes he's not the last to do a trip like this and he would love to see more professional athletes and celebrities give back in the same way. Absolutely love that what story. What an incredible human being. Right, and he's right. They, they really should do more of that. They don't, yeah. I mean, I think they do realize how people idolize them and look up to them, but this really, really hits home. The difference he made in those people's lives, and oh, yeah. that's just, that's incredible. Pretty